Welcome to the best battlefield settings guide for season seven. Sit back, relax, and let's get into this, shall we? Make sure you fire up your consoles and your PCs. We will be discussing PC specific graphic settings later in the video. When it comes to controller settings, I would highly recommend you set the buttons to alternate. This will make it so the right analog is crouch and melee goes to circle. This will help speed up your gameplay, allowing you to crouch in the middle of a gunfight, crouch bounce, go prone, and dodge your targets with the right analog stick. When it comes to controller mappings, I would highly recommend you flip these controllers here. So I set the ping grenades to R1 and R2 and then we go over to weapons and equipment and set fire to R1 and zoom to L1. So aiming and firing your weapon is on the front triggers. Highly recommend this as it's going to speed up your gameplay. If you do change this make sure to go through and also change the grenades as well to L2. Similar options here for Xbox as well. Definitely works for me this one, highly recommend it, but if you are going to do this you are going to have to go through and make sure everything is set correctly. If you do run into any issues, just click restore to default and start again. If we went through every single setting here, we would be here for hours. Use what works in previous games or over FPS titles that you play when it comes to this here. When it comes to vehicle controls, highly recommend you open up a private server straight in the main menu and have an experiment with various options here. Defaults should work for most people though. I do play inverted, so these options are mostly on inverted here for me, obviously. Use what works for you. Turn off controller vibration, it can affect your aim, no need for that to be on. On the soldier aim sensitivity, I use maximum 100. Would not recommend that for new players, somewhere between 30 and 50 is going to be fine. Inverted if you use that. FOV as we discussed earlier, ADS field of view as we discussed earlier here as well. Uniform soldier aiming, basically if you have this on and you scoped in with a sniper and turn 90 degrees to the right and then did the same with a pistol with iron sights, both would feel the same in terms of sensitivity. Highly recommend this on. As for the coefficient, there is lots of discussion in the community as for what is correct here. Honestly, you could have a play here. I would recommend just leaving this on default values. As for the top aim assist setting here, this is the kind of sticky aim. I would recommend somewhere between 70 and 80. At 100, it's gonna be difficult to aim at targets, particularly with a sniper rifle. You'll find it's really sticky, but when you come to adjust, you'll find some difficulty there. So 70 to 80 should be fine. Slowdown is the slowdown effect from the soldier aim assist option without increasing its sticky functionality. So basically your aim just kind of slows down when you're on target. I would leave this on 100. Zoom snap is when aim assist snaps to targets for you. I have this on zero as all of my snaps are exactly me doing them. When it comes to snap aim assist, I have, I'm not a big fan of snap aim assist. All of the snaps you see on this channel are me actually snapping to targets. Personally, I would recommend zero. If you're new to the game, leave this on 100. Soldier aim input curves here. This is basically the responsiveness of the sticks. If you're just coming from a previous battlefield title, you may want to copy the setting there. If you're coming from Warzone and use linear, you might want to put that to linear as well. Personally, I am just using the 2042 preset for the time being. Obviously, I played a lot of BF1 and BF5, but in this game, I just like to leave it on 2042. BF5, BF1 are gonna feel great, but my muscle memory in this game is as it is. In basic terms, the aim response curve is the relationship between the inputs on your analog sticks and the resulting response in game. Standard, for example, your aim rates will gradually speed up as you apply force to the analog sticks. This will be more forgiving if you accidentally press too hard. Linear is a one-to-one -one kind of feel. Whatever force is applied is reflected directly in game. Linear is the most consistent and in theory, better for building muscle memory. However, if you've not used this in previous games or other titles, it may feel extremely off. Just like sensitivity settings, there is not an exact answer. There's always pros and cons to each. Again, you can do the same for the soldier zoom aim inputs and the stick input acceleration presets. I've always recommended you have no acceleration. So set this to zero. On zero, your aim is going to be instant. No acceleration, highly recommend it. Soldier sprint, click a hold, I like click. Double tap forward to off. Sprint button is there as well. Sprint to vault over, don't like that, I have that off. Always use traversal sprint, I like to have this on. So this makes it so that you always enter traversal sprint immediately upon activating sprint. Soldier weapon zoom, do 
Do you like to toggle or hold? I prefer to hold. Zoom weapon button there if you want to change that. Steady scope toggle or hold. Once again, I prefer hold. Steady scope button there changes if you want to. And then we have the soldier zoom aim sensitivity. So this is your sensitivity while aiming down sights. 100 here is 100% of your hit fire sensitivity. So it's one to one. If you want to double it, set this to 200. If you want to half it, set it to 50. Parachute auto deploy off. And all of these options are very much personal preference. Use what works for you. I like to leave these ratios on the default values. It's in my muscle memory. I like to just leave it there. If you set it to 100, this keeps the vertical and horizontal movement very similar. All I'm going to say is you probably have got to have a play of this, but at default, it works fine for me. Highly recommend it. You're going to be fine. If you took my advice and turned on uniform soldier aiming, making all sites feel the same in terms of sensitivity, make sure all of these values are left alone at 100. So all of your zoom aim sensitivities will be exactly the same in terms of how they feel. Vehicle aim sensitivity, I would recommend somewhere between 50 and 70. You don't want it too high, you don't want it too low. 50 to 70 is going to be fine. Inverted controls there if you want to change those. Vehicle third person, we changed that earlier. Tank gunner and transport vehicle free look sensitivities, I leave these on 100. Vehicle aim input curves can be changed here. I would recommend having the same as infantry like we previously discussed. Vehicle aim relative controls, turn this off. Basically, when set to on, the vehicle will attempt to move relative to where the camera is aiming at. It can be quite confusing. I'd recommend leaving this off. Vehicle boost sets, click hold, up to you. Vehicle weapon zoom, toggle hold again. And you can change the buttons here for the zooms. Invert vertical flights, we discussed that earlier. As for the aircraft and helicopter control sensitivities, I like to leave on 70. Helicopter control assist, make sure this is turned off if you're a seasoned veteran. Leave it on if you're really new to the game. Basically, the game is going to help you while flying the heli. On screen right now, you can see the differences between the third person aircraft camera roll. Use whichever you feel works best for you. Again, here we have vertical aim ratios, this time for vehicles. I would recommend using the same as the infantry values you set earlier. Decouple tank to aiming from turning. I would recommend turning this on. Basically, what will happen is the game will attempt to keep the crosshair at its current position, even when turning the vehicle. Controller tuning, turn off vibration. It will affect your aim. No need for that. The dead zone is basically the control input that is required for input activation. So the lower the dead zone, the more responsive the controller is. However, if you set it too low, it could be too sensitive and you'll find it very hard to track targets, particularly at longer ranges. To be very steady in your aim, somewhere between 10 and 15 is going to be fine. For the dead zone on both analog sticks, I personally use 13. I would recommend leaving the actual dead zone and max input threshold on default values. You can have a play of these. You'll make your controller more responsive. However, it doesn't feel very consistent to me. So I left these on default values. Highly recommend you do the same. Also highly recommend you turn down the dead zone and max input threshold for the buttons here. You'll feel much more snappier. Highly recommend that. When it comes to the console settings, Xbox will be very similar here. Make sure your resolution is set to the maximum. There is no 120 hertz in this game, unfortunately, so that's not going to make a difference. Turn on HDR if you use that, and that should be good to go. Also, in the save data and game app settings, I would recommend setting the game preset to performance modes. For the controller in the accessories option on PlayStation, I'm sure there's something similar on Xbox. Go to controller general and change the communication method to use USB. Of course, if you really sat far back and actually want to use Bluetooth, leave this on. Field of view is the amount of observable world in front of you. Higher FOV means more peripheral vision. You can see targets around you much more easily, but targets at a distance become smaller and more difficult to track and aim at. At a lower FOV, you lose that peripheral vision, but targets are much bigger and easier to aim and track at. There's more benefits to going higher, so I'd recommend somewhere between 80 and 90. Vehicle third person of view, may as well set that to the maximum so you can see all the way around you and stop people coming up and C4ing, or in this case, C5ing your tank. Here is a comparison of ADS field of view on and off. I use on, recoil feels less, less visual recoil, which is really important with the latest update, and much more manageable. Highly recommend it. 
A brightness somewhere between 50 and 65 is going to be fine. I don't use HDR, but if you do, you can calibrate your HDR capabilities here. Set motion blur to zero, you don't need that on, and turn off these options at the bottom here. Make sure the HUD and HUD prompts are turned on. Control hints, reactive hints here, same as previous. You can enable or disable the HUD physics movement here, up to you personally. I used to use this quite a lot, now I've turned it off at the bottom of the screen here. You can show the vehicle seat info, really helpful that is, and see uh, which seats are available. Set soldier compass to always on, unless you really don't want that, and turn down the camera shake amount all the way to the bottom. You can really reduce the shake when explosions are going off nearby. It makes it much, much better, especially when you're in a fight. Colorblind options here. If you are colorblind, have a play of those. If you are, if you're not, you could use this to completely change the color scheme of the heads up display. Might be worth having a play with this if you like. Recommend setting show kills made by squad and nearby. Damage number visibility leave on. Score log, damage number size, small, medium, and large. Personal preference of this one, I would recommend small. Offset can be changed here if you wish. I leave chat on to when active. A lot of the time though, I do disable the chat manually in game. Some various options to change the chat box size as well. You can change the size and scaling of the heads up display here if you wish. On the right hand side, you can see the effects of your changes. Personally, default is fine with me. Process settings are incredibly important and can affect your aim and improve you as a player. Recommend crosshair opacity on 100. This is the opacity of the crosshair. Outline opacity on 50. Recommend a crosshair color of a pinky kind of purple. On the right there, you can see how visible it is in various conditions, terrains, and especially lighting conditions. Pink purple is really easy to see and track. With greens, yellows, reds, also pretty good. Highly recommend them. As well as crosshair thickness, I believe works best on the fin value there. There is default and the other one there. You can see the changes on the right if you wish, but uh, crosshair projection, basically when disabled, the crosshair is static and always aligned with the center of the screen. With this turned on, the crosshair is projected and can lessen the feeling of motion sickness caused by certain camera motions. Personally, I would recommend setting this off. Now, this hit indicator section is incredibly important. Make sure you're listening here. Leave the opacity in 100 unless you really want to change that. And at the bottom here, we have a little color scheme going on here. This is really going to help improve your gameplay and speed up your fights, making you a much faster player. So listen up. So for normal hits, I've got blue. Headshot, I've got red. And for kills, I've got green. So basically, if you see blue, You've done normal damage, you need to do a little bit more. If you see red, you know you've hit a headshot, you only need to do a little bit more damage and a body shot might do. Of course, if you see green, you know instantly you've downed the player, so it's a good time to snap to the next target or look for a different position. So potentially, if you set a similar color scheme here, as you can see, you can see that color, you're going to be able to react and move around the map much more faster, be more responsive. Highly recommend having this set up like this or something similar, honestly, it's a game changer. Armor broken hit to indicate a set indicator color to something bright. Yellow works for me. And turn on show damage type. Soldier damage color, I leave this on blue. Vehicle damage color on yellow. And the vehicle damage thickness to thick. Minimap settings are again very important. Really going to help your gameplay here. On the right, you can see the effects of your changes here. Rotate with you. Recommend turning on. And the rest of these options, I would copy these down. These work very well for me. Highly recommend them. Again, if you adjust any of the settings here, you can see the changes on the right. Just restore to default if you don't like them. You have various options here to change up the heads up display icons. That's the flag icons, player icons, all that good stuff. I would recommend mostly leaving pretty much all of this on default, unless you really want to change it. However, I would recommend changing in the zoomed in opacity. That is when you aim down sights, you want to change the opacity of the icons there so they don't get in the way. So if you're looking at a target 10 meters ahead and there's a flag behind them, the icon is not going to show up and block your view. Somewhere between 10 and 20 is going to be fine. As for sound settings, I would recommend leaving master volume on 100. I like a little bit of music, so 60 is fine with me. Turn it down completely if you don't want any music. Sound effects, leave on 100. And set in-game announcer volume to 60, so it's not too loud and distracting. I use the 3D headphone settings. I find these are the best for footsteps, at least for me. Do recommend you have a play with war tapes though. It's a classic battlefield setting, very loud, very immersive. You might enjoy it, it's worth a go. 
Here to indicate sound, that is the sound when you hit a target, leave this on. In-world radio, turn off if you don't want any in-world music. A new option at the bottom here, the music package. This is various options here from previous seasons. I'm going to leave this on default. Voice chat is turned off for me personally. Don't need to have that on. You can have play of these settings if you wish, and there is some subtitle options here if you need them. Make sure crossplay is enabled so you can actually find a game. Control hints appear on screen and can be very helpful for new players. Reactive hints such as the reload hint can be helpful too, so I'd leave both of these on. Turn off share usage data if you don't want to share your information with EA. Turn off player created content if you don't want to see that here. If you host any servers, turn on allow followers to allow players to join you. Turn on show XP type server and show party in menu. On the network tab, you don't need to change any of these settings unless you have some issues with latency. Turn on these options at the bottom here, record your gameplay and send it to EA help or anyone that can help you with the game. Now on settings for PC specifically, make sure set full screen mode to full screen, set your monitor here, set your highest resolution and the highest refresh rate as well. I like to use a mixture of graphic settings here. Highly recommend you try my settings and go with those. Of course, we could go through all of this and change all of them, but go with these and you're probably gonna get a decent amount of FPS. I think most of these are pretty self-explanatory. To get the most out of your system, if you are on a lower end system, do try dynamic resolution scaling options here and have a play of those if you have an Nvidia graphics card and want to squeeze out some more frames, you could turn on DLSS. Here you have a play of the settings. Quality works quite well. Ray tracing can make your game look absolutely amazing, but at the cost of some FPS. Quite a lot, in fact. Make sure this off. NVIDIA Reflex Low Latency should be set to Enabled plus Boost. Set it to Enabled if you're having any issues. Basically, this will reduce system latency, increasing PC responsiveness, and making your aim feel snappier and smoother, so leave it on. Set the Latency Flash Indicator to Off. Future frame rendering, if you want to squeeze out some more frames at the cost of input lag, recommend turning this on. I have it off, however, as my PC is a beast. Vertical sync, turn off as well. Don't need that, it will increase input lag. I actually use the default key bindings for PC. Honestly, if you're a PC player, have a play of these. I'm sure you can figure that out yourself. Default works for me. Mouse raw input, this will make your aim nice and responsive, so make sure this is on. You can change your key bindings on forts and on vehicles in the separate tabs here. If you are on PC, right click the desktop here, click in video control panel or the equivalent of whatever GPU you are using. Click change resolution, set your highest here and make sure the re I'm gonna leave that in. Make sure the refresh rate is set to the highest as well. On the Manage 3D settings, I would highly recommend copying my settings here. To make it a little easier to spot targets and brighten up your game, I would recommend changing the digital vibrance here up to 70%. Various accessibility options down here if you'd need them. We did discuss many of these before. Some of them are in other sections. So if you changed it previously, no need to change it here. You might want to have a play with the concussion effect. You can have it bright or dark on screen right now so you can see the differences. And you may want to turn down the visual and sound effect for Z's perseverance trait. Subtitle options here, we discussed those earlier and some extra control options that I believe are in the settings previously. So change these if you need to. Thank you very much for watching guys. That's all the settings. I hope it helps. Let me know any questions down below. Hope to see you guys in the next one. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you soon. Take it easy.